When you arrive back at the chamber with the underground river, you swiftly strip down to your undershorts. Thankfully, you, you're wearing undershorts at all, uh, giving your, given your proximity to a child, even a seemingly possessed one. Thankful that you're wearing <laughs> undershorts. <laughs> Why wouldn't you wear one? I mean, you should always wear your fucking underwear, fucking hell. Um, even a seemingly possessed one, Phobe is watching you with her small arms crossed impatiently. Many people don't wear underclothes and you suppose... Why? And you suppose that makes sense since the softer fabric is expensive. Oh, that makes sense. And just another thing to launder. You always enjoy the comfort and never wanted to get accustomed to the feeling of wool trousers uh, directly up against your nether. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you keep your belt up... On you keep your belt on with your sword and you tie your treasure pouch to the belt. Okay? Ready at last, you set the wooden torso into the water, breast down. It's a female minotaur? I think we picked up a minotaur's corpse, right? Or maybe something else, I don't know. Breast down and begin to uh, frog kick and paddle with one hand as you keep your glowing gem up to light your way. Your stomach and your chest and stomach resting on the torso's back. It's wonderful flotation and you're making rapid progress. You wonder what you could do if you had a large plank. Would you stand on it? Uh, I mean, is there enough space to stand? That might be amusing. There's a slight current speeding you along as you quickly enter the tunnel. The splashing water echoes in the tunnel. You begin to feel a sense of claustrophobia. Now that you're closer, it's easy to see that, uh, that the metal you glimpsed from the chamber is indeed a thick grate covering the way. You whisper a curse. Of course, Ruda here would not be so simple to allow someone to simply swim past their guards. On the other hand, a security presence tells you that this water likely leads somewhere worthwhile. Maybe there's a door or the grate is vulnerable? Uh, now you're pressed against the grate and holding onto the bars with one hand as you submerge the glowing gem and peer under the surface. The gem casts everything in hellish red. That must look ridiculous. Just then you catch a glimpse of something alive from beyond the grate, deeper down, just on the edge of your light. You could have thought it was a very large fish or a seal. It could not have been a seal. Those are not this far inland. Of course, until recently, you didn't think there were demons and goblins in Ring City. What are seals compared to that? Holding your breath, you keep as still as you can to not disturb the surface of the water so that you can see better. There it is again, not a fish, but a woman or a very pretty man with long hair. It's hard to say because it was moving so quickly, only a flash of pale skin, um, dark scales and bright eyes. Great, they're mermaids now about to stab me with a fucking, what is that, the Poseidon trident or something? Man, this is gonna be ridiculous. I mean, uh, anything I've learned from, uh, what is that, Minecraft, it's not a good idea to go around merfolk. But anyhow, growing up in a seaport like Windborne, you've heard tales of merfolk. Some sail sailors would uh, would brag about making love to mermaids. Yes, just as frequent frequently were the st other stories. The ones where sailors were dragged into depths to drown and be fed to the merfolk's young. Those stories were probably spread by women ha women haters. Why? I, I that that, that looks sounds like a story that a woman would spread so that that her husband does not go around, uh, you know. On the waters trying to like uh, you know pick up chicks or whatever uh, but whatever these stories were probably spread by women hater you think uh, quickly afraid that she will swim away you take a, a breath and shout into the water hello <laughs> wait, wait wait you shout into the water holy shit that must be difficult hello beautiful can you let me in your voice is garbled as you uh, to your own ears yet you hope she understand see nothing and are about to call underwater again when a woman surfaces out of the water on the other side of the grade or at least her head does uh, that's probably not a good idea to call out to her. She might be an agent of Rue. How do you know? Or at least her head does. Uh, just enough to see her deep. Intense eyes, the color of which you cannot tell in the li red light of your gem. As, as is natural, her wet hair is tight against her head above water. Under the surface, it flows around like her naked shoulders as though it were alive. Leave this place. Her voice rises up from the water. There is only death and misery here. What do you say? I see no death and or death or misery, only beauty. Um, I think I'm, I think the second one sounds very conceited and I'm very weak despite being the hero or whatever. So I, I think I'm going to go with, I see no death or misery, only beauty. I see no death or misery, only beauty, you say, uh, giving her a roguish smile. There is death and misery in this place, she says, her voice taking on a menacing tone. It occurs to you, however reluctantly, that she might not be amiable to your romantic advances. Indeed, she might not even be interested in human men at all. While keeping your smile, you frown inside. I cannot take this personally. She is perhaps more fish than woman. If you're uh, if you're lost, then find your way home and forget what you saw here, says the uh, mermaid. This is my one warning. I well, I should 
I should like to aid you, let me in, you stammer. She narrows her eyes, slips down beneath the water, not keen to be another uh, not keen to be another human drowned by mermaids, you shout, okay, as you push away from the grate and frantically frog kick your way back and way back the way you came, I'm leaving. You open your mouth wide and shove the gem in, into your mouth, freeing both hands to paddle. Making excellent time aboard your torso, puppet torso, but you are certain that it's nothing compared to what the merman, a mermaid is capable of. Of course, it has like a huge fin tail, so, you know, obviously, it's capable of, and no doubt that she could pull you under with great little effort. But then again, there's a grade in between us, right? So how would she cross over to this side? Anyhow, it's a great relief that you clamber out of the water, leaving the puppet torso to drift back into the tunnel. Uh, you're breathing heavy by the time you haul yourself out of the water. Hope turns away as you strip off your wet undershorts and put on your dry trousers. The, the, the nor well, is that the real phobe? Because if it's the demon phobe, then she would definitely not turn away. But she turned away, so I'm guessing that's the normal child phobe. Um, not as comfortable as you were before, but better than wet. After strapping your sword to your waist and confirming everything is in place, you creep down the hall. As you draw near the chamber at the bottom of the stairway where you came down, you hear the distinct clank of armor on the on the move. It's coming from up the stairs, it's getting louder. A few uh, options come to you. You could prepare your bow and give whatever it is a surprise greeting from below. Another option would be to hide in the shadows besides the stairway portal and ready your sword. I think I'm gonna hide because uh, I feel like uh, Agent of Rue must be coming and as soon as they come down they're probably going to ask those puppeteers like dude um, like we just uh, the Agent of Rue upstairs got murdered uh, did anyone come down here or something I'm gonna I'm gonna hide beside the portal roguey style uh, you did it like a rogue <laughs> uh, you did it like a rogue likes to you made a rogue's choice very funny um, quest complete nice job as a reward you were going to uh, we were going to give you a free chapter, but you already unlocked it, so get some free luck instead. Oh, I know what this is. This is a. I think there was like a like a timed thing going on. If you made a roguish choice um, in the game for like a certain period of time, they were supposed to give you, you know, uh, luck or whatever, unlock a chapter as you as it just said. But anyhow, um, that's just a game thing. Morale increases one. You've always been uh, because the only reason I chose hide and shadow. Normally I would choose the arrow, but I chose hide and shadow because last time we also hid in the shadow uh, when we were in Bone Bros room. So that's always good. That worked out then, so I'm hoping it works out now. You've always enjoyed hiding in shadows, and you have plenty of practice. You hurry to the side of the portal as quickly as you can, unsheathe your sword. The clanking. It's a good idea we also unsheathe the sword because if we did it while that per, uh, thing has come down, a person or whatever it is has come down, it's probably not a good idea because it's going to make a lot of sound as the sword exits the sheath. The clanking gets louder, then a man appears through the doorway, his long sword glinting dimly in the sputtering light from the lantern on the wall. He peers to the right, past you, and then to the left. You, he says, pointing his sword at Phobe, who is standing wide-eyed in the- Why? Why? Why would you do the- Mother of- mm -mm -mm. I, I hate this! With the agent of Rue, she came in and fucked up shit, and now she's standing randomly in the middle of the doorway instead of hiding with me. This is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous, dude. What is this? Um, every single time. You, he says, pointing his sword at Phobe, who's standing wide-eyed in the passage back to the underground river. He wears the cape of the crown guard. Right, we did meet him before, didn't we? With Kriya, when we were first underground. Uh, and he thought we were like antique hunters or whatever. Uh, you're reminded of the soldier that you saw under Shushan's antiquity. Shushan's, Shushan's antiquities and curiosities where there was that black haired woman that we saw before. Uh, when you emerged from the sewer some days ago, yes I remember that. Who are you? He takes, um, who are you? He says, taking a step towards Phobe. His sword at the ready. His back is to you now. What do you do? Well, normally I would say wait. But, I mean, if he's down here... And the crown guard is here. I'm guessing it's the house of Rue. I don't think I will be able to take down the crown guard even with a surprise attack. So I think I'm gonna wait. I asked you what your name is, says the soldier, continue to advance. You better answer. Phobe, she says, covering, uh, cowering, her lips trembling. What are you, what are you doing down here, Phobe? Uh, he says, I don't know. She whispers. 
I bet I can find a use for you, he says. Not liking this conversation, you step out of the shadows, beginning to stalk. Hope looks beyond the soldier, not to you. The soldier... Seriously? Man, when is, where is the demon when you need the demon? Damn, just take over him, uh, take over her and just maintain the position. When when he uh, he is taken over her, it still doesn't work. I was I was worried about this exact situation. Um, mother of fuck. Phob looks beyond the soldier now to you. The soldier spins around. I should stay hidden, I think. But I went out. Uh, the soldier spins around. You curse as you charge. The soldier snarls as he meets your charge, swinging his sword in a large arc, aimed as though to chop you from your uh, shoulder down to your navel. You parry the mighty blow and the shock nearly knocks your weapon from your hand. He lunges forward, slams you in the side of the head with his mailed elbow, knocking you down onto your hands and knees. He then savagely kicks you with his metal boot and then wings the flat edge of his sword down on your back. That that is a weird move, uh, hitting with the like the flat edge of the sword. Well, I didn't expect to win against him anyway. I'm guessing we just get like a, a morale boost if we attack him immediately. But we there was no way we could have won against him anyhow. So yeah, this situation is not going to get any better. But, I mean, he's the royal crown guard. I'm just like some random dude of the street with like good equipment and uh, no skill to our name. He's he, our character is exactly like a paid player honestly. You know what our character is like our character is like a paid player with um, with like a big brother sort of situation where like uh, they have like a friend or something who's like a really high ranking in the in whatever game they're playing so they kind of like uh, you know edge them forward and give them good equipment and stuff. Kind of works like that. That's fucking hilarious. Anyhow, you do your best to muster your strength to fight through the pain. He's either toying with you or wants to keep you alive because he could have cut you in two with that blow. You roll away, avoiding another kick on uh, up onto your knee, up onto your knees. He smiles as he adva advances. Little boy, you're going to scream for mercy. His smile fades as your blade suddenly flares with white light. You leap up and charge. He expertly parries your strike, but your blade slices through his blade. Uh, why did uh, why did Alethea help me out of nowhere? Leap up and charge. He expertly parries your strike, but your blade slices through his blade, then through his breastplate. Sparks flying uh, finally into his torso. His eyes bulge as he falls to the floor. There's a gasp behind you. Spinning around, you see Phob's face maintaining abject horror. You pull your sword free of the soldier's twitching body. You can hear Phob's breathing fast. A sort of whining sound begins. Shh. <laughs> That's what he essentially what he did. You hiss, putting your finger to your lips. This is why I didn't want you to come down here. Quickly you feel a pang of guilt. Why did I feel a pang of guilt? Seriously? Whatever whatever rogue is my character? Holy shit. This is ridiculous. He like unnecessarily charges, doesn't keep hiding, maintaining his position. Like if she want like if the soldier, the crown uh guard or whatever wanted to fuck phobe right he gave off that vibe that oh i can find a better use for you or that sort of thing i don't know why he would say that in this situation instead should he even he be not worried that a fucking rue agent is dead and like this little girl is here shouldn't he be investigating first before he would be interested in fucking her but um Regardless, other than that, I mean, even if he had the intention, that would have been perfect situation. Because, like, uh, because his back would have been turned and he would be on to her. And as soon as he, like, grabbed her or something, then that situation, his hands would be, like, you know, occupied and grabbing her shoulder or whatever. Or, like, picking her up or something. That opportunity would have been perfect for her attack. And in that situation, there is a possibility we could have even taken the crown guard down without Alethea's help. Uh, for whatever reason, Alethea helped, we don't even know. Probably have to repay her in some manner later. Uh, they're probably gonna be like, Oh, we help you, you gotta repay us now. Or die. Or something like that. Uh, I'm sorry, you say. He was a villain, a bad man like the ones who hurt your family. I was afraid he was going to hurt you. She stares at you. But you twirl your free hand and say, Look away, for As she turns, you plunge your sword into the soldier's eye. Wins at the sound it makes. It seems like a good precaution given what a formidable, formidable, formidable soldier this man was. Although per, uh, perhaps the worst is over. You're tempted to ask Forbes' possessor to take control of her now to spare the girl this memory, but that would probably be unwise. You have difficulty enough predicting people who have control over their mind and body. If you call out Forbes' possessor, there's no telling what might happen. You clean your sword and press your hard hand hard against your chest where the soldier's sword stabbed you. When did it stab us? I think. I think we got hit by the flat end and he parried one of us one of our blows i don't remember hitting the sword hitting us but okay you clean your sword and press your 
hand hard against your chest with a soldier sword stabbed into you. The bleeding isn't as bad as you would have thought given the pain. Taking a moment to listen, it sounds like the guard in the other room did not notice the commotion in here for some reason. There's, they're currently shouting something that includes you cheating pile off. You decide it's time to figure your way through the guards and do your... The, so you creep forward, ushering at folk to stay back. I think it was a good idea I actually went into um, the, the, the underground lake or whatever the river it was, the underground stream. Because if I had decided to fight these two, the crown guard would have shown up from behind and that situation would have been deadly.